What's up everyone, back for another beer review and today is another installment of a Macro Monday here on the channel where I review a, a beer from a, a macro brewery or a macro-esque beer from a craft brewery and the beer I'm reviewing today comes from and let me apologize in advance for the poor pronunciation of everything in this review but especially the brewery but this beer comes from the Quatamoke uh, Moctezuma Brewery and they're out of Monterey, Mexico, and this is their Bohemia Classica. So they're calling this one a Pilsner, and underneath it it says Cerveza Clara, which I think translates into English as a uh, light beer, pretty sure. Anyway, this is also known as a, a Mexican lager. It comes in at a 4.7% alcohol by volume, 21 IBUs at the time of review. I don't know exactly how old this a bottle is, does, does have a... Um, Best Buy date of October of 2023. At least that's what it used to say. It is now smudged off. I have no idea. Maybe I put my finger there. I don't know what happened, but all I know is that I'm reviewing this beer because of a lot of you guys. So uh, the last couple Macro Mondays have been uh, Mexican lagers or Mexican inspired lagers. The last one I did was Landshark Lager, which is basically a Corona inspired beer. And then before that was Modelo Especial, which a lot of you in the comment section said that Bohemia was your favorite Mexican lager, and I have never had this one before, so I was like, you know what? If I see it, I'll grab it. I saw it, I grabbed it. So here we are. Um, a lot of folks said, again, when they go to like uh, Mexican restaurants, they always drink this one, or if they want a Mexican lager, they kind of gravita uh, gravitate towards this one, and I'm here for it. So I hope it's uh, delicious. I hope it you know, reaches the upper echelon of Mexican lagers for what I want. And uh, yeah, I don't know ex exactly how fresh this is, like I said, but we're about two and a half months away from the Best Buy date, so I'm hoping that we're fine. Um, I'm trying to peel off the gold foil, but you know what? We're just gonna stop there because I wanted to see what's underneath it, but it is literally going everywhere and I can't do it. And you know what? No, not happening. Hopefully I don't get any gold foil into the beer. I guess we'll see. <laughs> Be little goodies in here. Anyway, let's give it a pour here. So, um, yeah, I guess we're just doing a bunch of Mexican lagers for Macro Monday throughout the summertime. There could be worse things, honestly, though. Um, so, yeah, that pours out like so many other uh, Mexican uh, lagers. The difference, though, is that I will say this is a little bit darker. Um, a lot of them are like, you know, that straw golden, you know, super light beer. This is a little bit darker. It's probably going to come off on camera's darker. But, yeah, this has more of like a darker, like golden, like a wheat color, I would say. It had a finger of a bright white uh, soap sudsy looking head. Now dissipates about a half a uh, head or so. Good carbonation. This does have the etching at the bottom to promote carbonation. Hold up to light. Yeah, this, this definitely looks... A little bit darker, which is nice. I mean, it's not like crazy dark or anything, but definitely has a little bit of a darker tinge to it. Let's get a nose. That's actually, wow. There's a lot of like nice malt character. It's biscuity, a little bit of grainy, almost a, um, like a, a, a <laughs> this is gonna sound stupid, but almost like a breadiness you'd get from a Hellas Lager. Not that intense, not that complex, but just kind of that realm. So the malt character off the first whiff, really nice. It doesn't really have like a corny tinge either. Smells pretty clean from the malt. Um, there's a very slight hop kick that I'm getting very slight. I'm talking very slight. What kind of, a little bit of earthiness maybe? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't smell super complex or over the top. Again, this style is not meant for that. But what's here, I really like that malt character. It's, it's, it's kind of like a, a Modelo or some other of my favorite Mexican uh, lagers where I feel like the malt character for me is like the defining aspect for it, where if like I'm getting that corny kind of like American adjunct lager uh, feel, it's like it's kind of, I don't say ruins it, but it's just like, ah, this is another generic uh, a beer. This has a little bit of character to it. And I appreciate that. And I think it smells really good. And my mouth's watering, not only because I want to drink this, but I think like I would love some tacos or a burrito or something in front of me to uh, pair with this. But just got to make do with what we're doing here, so let's uh, get into it. Cheers, everyone. The, I, okay, so I totally get why people enjoy this one. There is more of like a, what's the best way to, I guess the best word I could use here, but it might be taken wrong, in, in a wrong uh, manner, but I would say, um, it has a richness to it for the style. Like it has this nice rich quality. It almost has a Negra Modelo kind of feel like in terms of like, doesn't taste like that. Doesn't taste like that beer. What I'm saying is where you drink it and you're like kind of surprised that it has a little bit of complexity to it, but it has a richness or like a depth of flavor. It's kind of 
kind of kind of awesome for the style, honestly. It's not super light. This is like lower side of medium body for 4.7%. It's nice, even though approaching medium. The mouthfeel, it's crisp. It's super clean. It's, it's pretty effervescent. This is like moderately carbonated, kind of like what the style would dictate. But man, I, I kind of understand it now. Like, I, I'll be honest with you. I saw a lot of those comments. You know, you guys are like, oh, Bohemia's my favorite. I think it's much better than everything else. And there was like six to eight of you, which is a substantial amount of people in a channel my size to be like, hey, this is a beer you got to try out. And you're not wrong. After a couple sips of this, this is like really nice for what it's supposed to be. The flavor, like, again, the nose carried over. The, the malt is rich, but like not super complex. It has this biscuity, bready kind of malt character, I'm getting a little bit of like a slight caramel, like very slight caramel. Maybe even a touch of like a honey. But that hits me right at the front of the palate. As it passes through, I get a little bit of a um, fruitiness. Almost like a lemon or a lime, some kind of citrus. And maybe a touch of like a um, red apple core, maybe a pear. A very light fruitiness. On the finish, though, this dries out immensely. This is, to me, full-on dry. Very mild bitterness. There's not a lot of bitterness here. I mean, the malt is definitely dominating, but that dryness is very welcome because it balances out exceptionally well. Yeah, it has like this earthy... Yeah, I'd say more like an earthy kind of uh, bitterness, mild bitterness, but like an earthy dry finish on the back of the palate. Again, very mild in terms of its... Um, bitterness but that dryness is really nice uh, again super clean 4.7 percent you can't tell like this is this is a step up i think from a lot of the mexican uh lagers that i've drank in my past like modelo especial was definitely up there for me you know one of my favorite uh negra modelo is my probably favorite like mexican lager even though it's i think it's unfair to compare that to something like this or like a soul or a tecate or a corona or a modelo uh especial because it's, it is a different style, even though, you know, it is a lager. But I would say this. I think, at the end of the day, I would pick this over the vast majority, if not all, of the regular light beer, uh, Pilsner-esque uh, Mexican beers. I think this is really well done. It's not even, I'll say this, it's probably not super fresh. It's Best Buy October of 2023, two and a half months away. They probably give at least, I'd say, at least six months, maybe even nine, maybe a year. So you're probably looking at a beer that's at least four months in the bottle, if not six. I'd imagine super fresh, this would be even more vibrant. And uh, I, yeah, this is, this would pair so well with so many different, um, you know, Mexican foods that, like, yeah, one more sip and we'll, we'll, we'll rate it. Yeah, I think this is really good. Honestly, for a beer or a Pilsner or a lager, I think this is this is definitely not a Pilsner, at least in my mind. Like, it definitely has a lot of... I, I always feel like when you're drinking a Pilsner, there's, there's more of like a big balance from like a decent bitterness, like a mild to at least moderate bitterness, like more to the moderate side. But I also think it just has different characteristics. But they call it Pilsner, whatever. If you just want to say Pilsner or lager or whatever, that's fine. To me... This drinks like a little bit of a, uh, like I said, like a, like a Hellas, but not that complex. Something in that realm or like, um, I don't know, I'm at a loss for style comparisons, but I will say it has a little bit more a richness and a little bit more uh, depth of character for something that I'm thinking is just going to be super light and crushable and not thinking twice about it. Uh, I think it's pretty good. Uh, would I give Modelo, especially at like a 3.6 or something like that? Stylistically, I can't really say this is crazy high in terms of like, I, if you're going for like a, a Pilsner... It's fine. It's like a four out of four out of five, maybe. Like, I don't know. It's maybe like a three, seven, five. But for a Mexican lager that's cheaper and I guess readily available, you could pair with uh, Mexican food or probably any kind of food and just enjoy it. And has, I, I just like, this is nice. I'm going to give this a, uh, I'm going to give this a four out of five. Like, this is the highest probably Mexican lager I've uh, uh, ever rated. Negro Modelo would probably get in that same realm. I don't know. This is good, though. Thank you to everybody who recommended this. Like, I'm, I can't believe I've never had this before, but it's just one I haven't had. So price and availability, this is where it's even better. $8.99 six pack in my neck of the woods. I paid like a buck 79 for that bottle. Uh, I could definitely see me buying it again at that price point. You're talking less than 10 bucks for a six pack. Yeah, yeah, I would definitely grab that. Especially when I was like Land Shark Lager as well. I would I say like $10.99 in my area for two bucks cheaper. Superior beer in my opinion. Um, availability. I don't know. You tell me. If you can get this one uh, easily in your area, let me know. Um, is this your favorite go-to Mexican uh, lager, or do you have something else that you think is better than this? Do you not even like this? Maybe you don't. We all have different opinions. That's how it works here. Now, 
For those of you who stayed at the end, this is gonna be a longer review. A lot of people are gonna see this is probably gonna be like 10, 11, 12, 13 minutes and be like, holy shit, why is it taking that long to review Bohemia? Well, you know, I talk about price, talk about availability, but here at the end, I'm thinking about doing something, I don't know if it's gonna be this summer or maybe in the fall or maybe even next year, but there's some people who have suggested this, but I've already had the idea like kind of brewing in my head. I was talking to a good friend of mine, viewer of the channel, Rick, and then some other folks uh, also mentioned it. They were like, it'd be cool to do like battle beers, right? Like where you take a couple Mexican lagers, head to head, see who wins. Cool, I love that. I love battle beers. I see other beer tubers do it. It looks like a lot of fun. What I thought I would do though is maybe at some point, and this would go for a lot of different styles, I think it would be a lot of fun and it'd bring something new to the channel other than just straight beer reviews. But what if I did an NCAA uh, basketball tournament style like bracket where I would pick eight beers within a style and probably the first style I'd do would be Mexican lagers. But let's say I picked eight beers within the style. And we did an Elite Eight where you would have, you know, four matchups. They would all move on. Then you'd have two more matchups and then they would move on to the championship and you crown a winner. I would obviously have to buy, um, you know, probably three bottles of each beer just in case, it's, you know, whatever one. Or maybe I could space them out where I could buy them, um, you know, each time I review them. But here's the thing. While I have that in mind, I do think that I would prefer to do them blind. But I would either need somebody to give them to me in person here in the uh, Buffalo, New York area, or I'd need somebody to potentially send them to me, or I could just do them myself, where I see a lot of beer tubers, they pour it, they flip the script, they have the same glass, so on and so forth. I don't know. You tell me, would, does it matter if it's blind? Would you rather have it blind, even if, though it might be a little bit, logistically speaking, harder? Because I think that would be a fun way, and, and you could do that. I, I, the other style I was really thinking about doing is like porters. Like, I would say like American porter. Like, you could do Edmund Fitzgerald and, um, who else we got? We got Black Butte from Deschutes. We could do Smutty Nose, Robust Porter. We could do Anchor Porter, or maybe not anymore. Um, but, you know, we, let me know if that sounds like something you would enjoy, uh, because I think that would be a lot of fun. We could do it with a lot of different styles. But I don't know when I would introduce that, and I don't know exactly how I want to tackle it. So if you have any opinions on it, post in the comment section. Again, apologize for the longer review, but the review was done long ago, so whatever. If you made it to the end, uh, I don't know. Do the thumbs up. Maybe this, there's not a two thumbs up emoji like I do. Do a thumbs up emoji. Let me know you watched to the end. If you've had this one before, post in the comment section. Like I said, let me know what you think about it. And I appreciate everybody stopping by for another a Macro Monday here on the channel. Like I said, in the past, I do these every three weeks. I will try to make sure that I don't do a Mexican locker for the next one. We'll pick something else. I don't know what it'll be. It'll probably just be on a whim. But if you have any suggestions, post in the comment section. Let me know and I'll try to get to them. So anyway, to the next one. Cheers.